after this season the bevel gear has torn up a little bit of the pinion gear this is just typical wear and tear you're going to see this now if it's height adjustment on the motor is bad they will fail much sooner than they should speaking from experience i know that <laughs> i had one on my bolt rifle fail much sooner than it should have uh, stripped right out uh, nonetheless uh, i have taken pictures with my phone i'll put them throughout here but hopefully you might be able to see that these gears they're they're chipped away and it, it really should be replaced and these gears you can find them all over the internet they're usually a couple cents a couple bucks a piece something that too crazy uh, one thing to know though and it's actually good i should take a picture as well with these you might be able to see but on the motor there's two different style pinion gears there is a D style and an O style, and each one has a different way of removing them. Now the O style, what you'll notice is there is no set screw, unlike the D. Uh, usually you just unscrew this a little bit and you can kind of pop that off. Uh, the <coughs> O one, like the Crytek, is pushed on. Now to get that off, it's a little a jig, a little puller, I forget the exact name, but I'll, I'll put, post it down in the description. and. With this little doohickey, uh, if I can use that word, uh, you basically just set the gears in and be able to pull them out. Now there's the two different style um, little uh, inserts, if you want to call them that, and depending on what you're doing is where they go. So I'll, sh I'll demonstrate. So right now what I need to do is get this uh, gear off. So there's a little uh, thing here. It goes on the bottom plate here it's to protect it as you are pulling that out and what happens is that right now I'm setting it up for a couple different ways so then that way it'll be a quick little spot now these things you'll have to get them all out of your way and just for storage purposes I had them in there now this is where they set down and I'm trying to get here we go okay get this set so this is what this is what we want. I'm going to try to show it here on one of the two cameras. You can see that the very the uh, gear is inside of this little cradle, so to speak, and the rest of your motor is underneath that. So I'll try the other camera to see if you can see that. But that's how that sets up. Now to be able to get that uh, gear out, this I'll call it right now the top one that I'm currently spinning. This will come down and it locks onto the shaft, so to speak. Again, I'm trying to get the best angle I can. And uh, what you wanna make sure is, as I'm looking now, is that it's not like offset to where you're pushing on both the gear and the, um, the gear and the shaft. You wanna be able to post it just on that. Okay, so this one was a little tough to get started, but I was able to finally uh, get this uh, going. And it's quite a bit of hand cranking that you almost feel like when you're doing it that you might try to, it might break something or strip something, but in reality it won't. It just, uh, when you're first setting it up, you just, that's when you're taking the time to make sure everything's lined up. And as I'm doing this now, you can start to see that the gap here is opening up as I push this gear out and it again this is very tight so it's, it's gonna take a little work but as you get further out it gets a little easier so now we've got that off and some people have uh, upgraded these uh, little boys uh, right here is just the stock thing. I guess there's uh, some that have bearing. I know there was one I got by SHS. Yes, there's a SHS one here that's got uh, more bearings and a replacement to where I might actually, I wasn't initially planning on putting it on there, but maybe I will. Does this spring come off? Look at that in a second. But on the fly, we're going to check this out. I might just go with it anyway and see what goes on. Assuming I can get the uh, spring off of here. I initially had that as just a replacement in case a part went, to, went bad. Got the SHS um, 
sleeve here with a couple more of the bearings and now we've got the new gear now to put the new one on there's a couple different steps you have to take the when you get the press you have these two uh, inserts this is what you're going to need for uh, when you are doing the second part so it's kind of a pain not gonna lie but uh, basically this round cylinder one has to go on the top part that normally would uh, so as you see right now what that does is that creates a flat surface spot for uh, you to put pressure down on this gear so what I'll do is I usually just get it kind of lined up so it's just snug like this it's all snugged it in and then you take this other part like a donut of sort this is what goes over the bottom part of your motor like so for this to press in and you're going to want to put a little uh, grease on these every so often uh, just to keep them moving well and the longevity and now you're just going to take this slowly and kind of just get it into place so now as you can see the shaft is lined up with that gear and we are just going to slowly twist this on and you're going to want to pay attention as you're doing this to see if any bogging if it's moving around on you it shouldn't for the most part they're usually pretty good once you get them set now the motor might twist on you a little bit that's fine i'm just holding it with my hand and here we go now there will come a point when you will bottom out to where the shaft is on the top of the gear so when you feel it stop moving i don't try to over press on it that's kind of why you have this piece up here both to hold it and to kind of have a set point okay i might have hit that we will see nope still got a little ways to go And I think we're good. Let me get this bad boy out and see. Yep. So now we've got the new one pressed on. And there's a little bit of a, a gap down here, just like the last one. But that is the change out there. And now from here, I can go on to matching the bevel gear to the pinion gear in the first step of the shimming process. All right, so now the gears are shimmed and ready to go. i am put a little grease on them before I finish the task up. What I'm going to do is put in a new uh, piston. As we saw before, this back end got uh, torn right out uh, from the heavy use. And after that many rounds, like I said, I'm not too uh, disappointed with that. And as long as I'm at everything else, I need to inspect the rest of the parts. I've already taken off the uh, Max piston head off the other one. And everything I can tell as far as the... Um, shape it's in is still looking uh, pretty good to me the o-ring maybe might need a little replacement i'll be able to see once i get onto the uh, piston head and into the cylinder next on the cylinder itself as i'm inspecting it it's not in too bad a shape um, for how it rounds it's gone through um i don't know if you'll be able to see it but i'll try to get down in here but there is some wear and tear uh, I, I could leave it in there, it would be fine, but as long as I'm going through this realm of replacing a lot of these wear and tear parts, I'll leave this aside for a backup spare. I'll go ahead and drop a new one in there. And the cylinder head by Max also is looking uh, pretty good shape. You can see on the pad a little bit, hopefully, the um, outline where the holes from the piston head have been hitting it. It's worn, but it's not bad. I think I could get away with it at least one more season with it before I might feel comfortable on replacing it. And the front uh, pad here is also worn down a little bit from that um, abuse, but again, I think I can get away with it for a little longer and the O-rings seem to be uh, just fine. Nozzle as well, as I'm inspecting, it looks good. I might need a little cleaning. I could take like a little Q-tip through that. But uh, as far as like actual um, compression and everything, we'll check that as well. But as far as the fit onto here, um, that seems to be pretty good. I, don't, I feel a little bit of resistance, 
but once I can get everything together, then I'll know for a fact how that compression is. So what I'm going to need to do is get this uh, head off of the piston and get the new one on. Okay, so uh, when you're taking off these piston heads, always check inside to see exactly how the setup is. Now for Crytek, they've got the setup like this. Uh, some just have a screw in, you just, just double check your own when you're doing that and make sure that you don't strip that out because that could, especially in this case, this is brand new. I can at least save that for a spare part. Now for attaching the piston head, pretty simple as we did before. This goes right in through here and for your screw that goes in there always 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 use loctite because if you don't within a very short number of rounds it will loosen itself up and you don't want that that's a bad day when i say by soon like you <laughs> maybe less than 50 rounds like not even kidding so speaking from experience okay so i've got the uh, max piston head now on a piston this is ready to go now we'll focus on the cylinder and cylinder head. When you're putting these on, you just make sure the port is the further end away from where your cylinder head is. And I will put a little bit of grease on that as well as a little bit of grease into the cylinder for um, being able to seal that right up. Now most of these cylinders, you're gonna see a little bit of a lip, so to speak, or a high point that is where it lines up with the edge of your cylinder. If it's sitting too far down or too far up, that can cause compression issues amongst many other things. Now what we're gonna do is a compression check and first we'll get some grease put on here. Cause again, I wanted to see how this um, O-ring is doing. Cause if need be, I've got brand new O-rings that I can toss one on there if it's not doing so well. Check that out. Plug in that hole and yep, we're getting next to nothing on that, so that might need a new O ring. So we'll give that a check. Just to make sure I'm not going too crazy, I'm going to get the old one that was the old cylinder, put this back on here and see. So we get that, got that. Here we go, and I'll check. Yep. Yeah, it would just. I should not be able to force that forward, so I'm gonna guess that that ring might need to be replaced. Again, this is just your normal wear and tear parts. They will break down in time. There we go. All right, so got that new one on, throw a little bit of grease. Oops, and if after this it still has a compression issue, then may have to try to get a different uh, Crytek cylinder and see if uh, we can get that. Okay, so now that I've replaced the uh, O-ring on the piston head, I'm gonna check the uh, compression once again and see how we do. And we're good, we're looking good. It's not moving whatsoever. Like I'm pushing really, really hard on this and not going anywhere. So success, simple little O-ring. Now what I want to check is the compression with the nozzle itself. So I'll put the nozzle on and try this test again. And mm, it's not 100%, but it's, it's, it's there. Yeah. This will definitely need to be replaced sometime soon. I think I can get away with it for now because that compression, it, it's it's fair. I think it'll be okay, but definitely after this season or on the next failure, that will be needed to get replaced. So, but it's not like I'm gonna lose a, a, a lot, a lot of feet per second, but I will lose some. But for now, I'm comfortable with it. So the that is all set. Now my tap-up plate, still in good condition. 
and it's sitting in here very well. So uh, given a visual inspection, it's not looking like there's any cracks or excessive wear or tear that would be a concern. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, gears greased up and start to get this gearbox put together. I'm also going to go ahead and put in Max's uh, speed trigger here. Uh, I checked with the gate aster uh, by closing the gearbox up and seeing if it could sense it and sense it no problem. So I'm going to try to go with this and be excited to see how much difference that is. Mm -hmm. 